Hey there, Scott here. Your video is going to start in about 30 seconds. I just want to give you a little bit of context. The video you're about to watch is part of a series of educational videos. Some of them are taught by me. Some of them are taught by other instructors. The goal here is to bring in experts who have excelled in their niche or their industry over their career and let them teach over to you whatever they specialize in. There's a variety of tools, technologies, walkthroughs, sales, marketing, business, startup, growth concepts and ideas. Hopefully you can learn and the whole goal of all of these videos is to help you level up in your personal or your professional life. Enjoy. Hello and welcome to this Android development tutorial. In this tutorial we will learn how to make a calculator app. So we open Android Studio and create a new project and the first thing we will do is change our layout file so we go to our layout folder and we will delete the file that is created by default we will uncheck these two boxes and we will go to the layout folder right click new and layout resource file here we will call it uh, the same name it was previously, it doesn't really matter, or you can call it something like just my layout. But in the second field, we will delete the root element and we will type linear layout. We will click on OK. And since we change the name, we go to our main activity.java file. As you can see now, it, this name is in red, so we have to change it to our new name, which in my case was my layout. Okay, everything is fine. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we will go to our main layout.xml file, change to text view. Okay, we will close this uh, lower menu right here. And as you can see, we have an empty screen in which we can create uh, our UI elements for our calculator. So as you know, a calculator at the top has a screen that shows their numbers. For that, we will use a text view. So we open an element and type text view. On width, we will set to match parent. On the height, we will set it maybe to 100 dp. We can change that later if we need to do so. Okay, and we will add an ID. The ID we will use this time will be um, calculator screen. Okay, that's what we call this text view. Okay, right now we will create the buttons of the calculator. For that, we need a horizontal layout. So we will open a linear layout um, object. We will set the width to match parent, the height to 0 dp, the weight to 1, and the orientation to horizontal. OK? Inside these linear layout, we will specify our calculator buttons. So, for example, we open an element and type button. The width of the button will be 0 dp. The height will be match parent. And the weight will be 1. Why do we use these weights? Well, because these uh, calculator will automatically fill any screen device you run it even if you have a 3 inch device or a big 10 inch tablet it will work fine because of weights we will um, check that in a moment okay so the first button has every button has to have an ID so we will add an ID uh, for example this can be and seven, so we can say this button will contain the number seven, and we also will set the text to the number seven. So this will be our number seven. As you can see, the number seven appears here, but maybe we wanted to make 
make it a little bit larger. So we will set text size to 25 SP. Okay. And now we have our button. If you want to order the text uh, layout, we will press Ctrl Alt L and the IDE will reformat the text for us. Okay, now what happens if we add another button right next to it? So it will be put to the right side of it because this is a, a horizontal linear layout. So we will copy this. We won't be uh, writing a lot more because we will copy stuff we already made and change the values we need. So we will paste this here and you can have, have uh, these two seven buttons right here. Okay, this is what we want. Please check that you have these two seven buttons right here. If you are okay with that, then we are going to change the ID and the text field. So instead of N7, this will be N8, and instead of seven, it will display the number eight. Okay, we will do the same and paste another one next to it, and this of course will be the button nine. Okay, and the text nine. Okay, we need also operations. So we can put another button and these we can change the ID to, for example, um, maybe addition, maybe division, whatever you may want. In this case, we will do division. Okay, and the sign of division will be a, a kind of just a forward slash, like that. You can have a different um, symbol if you want, like the traditional calculator's division, or you can just have this, which is the programmer's sign for division. Okay, so now we have four elements on a linear layout. Now we will copy the whole linear layout. So these four buttons and the linear layout that contains them and we will paste it below this. So we will duplicate it below it. Okay, as you can see now we have two rows of buttons. And of course we have to change the buttons right here. So in the one that we copied and paste, the one that is below, we will change it to N4, the first element, with 4 as text, N5 as ID, N5 as text, N6 as ID, N6 as text. As you can see the change I made, you can see the effects they have right here on the preview. Okay, so check your preview, make sure it's the same as mine. And now the last one of these, we will change division ID with uh, multiplication. Okay. Multiplication. Okay. And the sign for multiplication will be a star, kind of a, a sign for programmers. Again, you can use other signs of traditional calculators if you want, but we will, I will be using these. Okay, we have two rows now. We will create the third one by pasting the previously copied button. And on this row, we will set N1, text 1, N2, text 2, and N3, text three. Okay. And these will be subtraction. And the subtraction sign, of course. And we will create the last one, the last row. And we will change these to 
So what can we put here? Maybe we can put a dot here as the first element. So as an ID, we will put dot and text will be a dot. And here should be zero because zero is missing. So and zero text zero. Instead of nine, it can be equals. That will be useful. Equals equal sign. Okay. And on the last one, we will use, of course, addition. So, oops. Okay, addition. So as you can see right here, we have our UI for calculator. We have uh, four rows of four buttons each row and you can understand how linear layouts work. So if we go to the top of your file, you can see that your root element, which is linear layout, has vertical orientation. This means the child element. That means the element inside it will be put uh, vertically one after another. The, el the first element is a text view which we call the calculator screen. The second element is a, is a linear layout. And then we have each row is a linear, linear layout. Okay. So maybe we want to make the screen a little bit larger. Maybe. We can change how it will look in different uh, devices. For example, if we uh, change it to maybe generic phones and tablets and we choose a four inch device we can look how it will look how it will look like on those devices okay so it's for now I think it's kind of okay how it's looking and but if we change the text so if we set the text view um, something to text here and say for example hello we can see that the text size is so small and it's not centered. So we would change this, of course. We would change the text size to maybe 25 SP and we will change the gravity to center. And maybe if we want to center horizontally and to the kind of to the right side of it, we can go and say right um, center vertical and we can also specify a different um, specification right here or maybe we can just test with layout gravity and now we don't use that that's not okay so we have to center vertical and we need a way to specify that we want to move the the text to the right side but we also need a kind of margin to make it look better so margin we will set it to maybe 10 dp okay as you can see right here it has some margin for it to look a little bit better so 10 dp and i think i will leave it here but maybe we will change this to just center so while we figure out how when how can we make this go to the other side okay so we will delete the hello text uh, field and now we will go to our main activity.java file to initialize our calculator. The first thing we will initialize will be the calculator screen. So we will type final text view calculator screen. And we assign that to find view by id r.id that calculator screen okay next we have to initialize the buttons we have right here 
So to initialize them, we will we have two options really. We can create a, a click listener for every one of them, or we can create a click listener for all of them. Okay. So in either case, we will have to define all the buttons. There's also a way in which we can uh, specify the on click the on click element here and that will be called when we tap the icon but I will do it as a object definition right here so we will go and say final button and we will start with n0 which is the first button is equal to find view by id r dot id dot n zero and we do the same with every other button so that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen so we have n zero and one and two and three and four and five and six and seven eight and seven and eight and nine and here we will have um for example dot um equals and four operations so addition subtraction multiplication and of course division and we have to change the IDs too so n0 and 1 okay and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and oops and 5 and six and seven and eight and nine and here we can say dot equals addition subtraction multiplication and division okay so we are we have all of but all of our buttons and also we have our text view so that's cool now we will create a on click listener and we will say final on click listener um calculator listener we will name it that way and we'll set it to new on click listener okay and when this thing is clicked as you can see a view element is passed so to know which button was clicked we have to get the id of the view so we will type final int id and we will set it to b dot get id b dot get id okay pretty easy now we can use the switch keyword right here for example switch and here we start um, using the cases for example here we will switch id and we will set case in case the id is r that id that n zero for example okay we will do something and we will of course break and we will do the same for every button we have 
3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And we change the IDs of every one of these. So N0, N1, N2, N3, N4, N5, N6, N7, N8, N9, dot equals and I think four operations right yeah four operations addition subtraction multiplication and division and now we know every object or action that our calculator can have but now we have to set the listener okay the click listener so just after this we will go and say v0 which is button 0 was v0 or n0 i think that set on click listener and it will say calculator listener again we will do this for all of our buttons so 16 times we have already one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen and we change our name the name of the element like n1 n2 n3 n4 n5 n6 n7 n8 and nine um, dot equals Okay, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So now we are ready to start doing everything the calculator does. So we will do that in the next video. I hope you enjoy it and I see you later. Bye. Hello and welcome to this Android development tutorial. This is part two of our how to make a calculator app tutorial. In the previous tutorial, we did the layout stuff. We did the uh, combination of view settings, on click listener setting and view listeners on Java. So here we have a little error and the only thing we have to fix it is to press a semicolon to end the line and the error is solved in case you didn't notice it. Now as I told you previously there was something pending on the previous um, tutorial and it was that we wanted the text to appear at the center but also the right side of the text div. So it turns out that it has a pretty simple solution. We press and we, apart from center, we tell it to do it right with this separator right here, which is kind of the a large L. It's kind of the L, but larger. It's a symbol that usually is near the enter key. You can find it in your keyboard. Okay. And so now to test this, we will say text and hello. And as you can see, the first to the right side of this. Um, text view so we will so that was just for um, aesthetic purposes but okay so let's continue to the tutorial and here we find that we have uh, created the buttons the text view and set the listener to every button we have okay in my case I have 107 lines so you should have about the same right now we will start output numbers. So how do we do this? For example, when the button zero is pressed, we want it to print the number zero 
into the screen. So we will say calculator screen set text double quotes and zero. Okay. So to test these, I will use an emulator. You can do it in a real device if you want, or you can also do it on an emulator. So we are doing this tutorial step by step in order for you to really understand what's going on. What are we saying here is to set the text view to the um, calculator screen. So we can change the screen as in a real calculator when the button is set. Okay, so while we wait, Oh, it's already loaded. Okay, so this is the previous um, tutorial we made, but we will wait a little bit here. So as I was telling you, the screen of the calculator displays the numbers that will be calculated, the operations and the result of it. So here we have our calculator and if we press these buttons, nothing will um, take place here but if we press the zero button then the zero will appear right here okay because we set it so please make sure you have done this and if you haven't uh, I mean please repeat the video or the previous tutorial if you need to okay so here we have four buttons right here that are kind of a special buttons which are the operations and we have 10 buttons that are numbers and additional to that we also have the dot button which is part of numbers if you can uh, think that way and also the equals or the solve button. Okay, so we have to do different things right here. So we used set text to set this zero right here, but that's not really very useful because if we press then another button, then the zero will be gone and we don't want to do that. We want to append um, the characters. So we will use the append function instead the set text. So we will delete set text and instead of set text, we will say append, okay? pretty easy and simple and we will do the same with every button that has to be displayed on the screen like the numbers okay so we will start just with numbers so we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. We will run the app again. And we will see how it works. Okay, so we have our new app right here. If we press uh, zero, the zero will appear. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Great, right? Pretty fun. Okay, so we can notice here that the um, the color of the screen numbers are not that black. So it will be cool to make them black and make them a little bit larger. Okay. So we will do just that right now. So instead of 25 SP, we will go with 30 SP. And we will set text color to number sign followed by six zeros. Okay. We can press Ctrl Alt L to reformat our code and then we will run the app again to see if it's better looking. Okay, so as we run the app, we can press the buttons and see that they are black now and also larger, which is great. Now, what happens if you didn't want to press the button and you want to delete it? 
Okay, so we want to add a delete button, delete um, the previous character or something like that. We will add that um, as a new linear layout at the top right here. So we will open and say linear layout with much parent height zero dp weight one orientation horizontal and inside it we will do we will copy button we already did like the seven and we will actually create two buttons okay one will be to delete the previous character I will call it D E L. Okay. And the other one will be to clear everything. So clear everything and we will display it C E. Okay. We format reformat the code and we have to again generate a new button right here for this. We will do it outside the button we already created so we type final button um, delete and we will say find view by id r.id that delete or del in this case um, and we will say delete set on click listener new on click new on click listener okay and what happens when we the delete button is pressed so going back to the emulator we want for example if I press 9 I want the 9 to be delete and if I press delete again I want the 8 and the 7 and so on so how do we do this okay so basically, we have to change what is displayed. For that, we will use a string. Displayed elements. Okay. And we will set it to um, calculator screen that get text. Okay and that to string okay now the displayed element string contains what it's displayed on the on the calculator screen and we want to delete the last element of this okay and we also don't want to do anything if there's nothing to delete okay so for that we need to check the length of this uh, string so we will go say int uh, um, screen length we can say or something like or just length okay and we will set that to displayed elements that length okay and we will type if length is greater than zero, we will delete the previous one. Because if it's zero, so it's empty, we don't have anything to delete. And it will generate an error, which we don't like to. We hate errors. Okay. So right now, if the length of our string is greater than zero, at least it has to have one character. Okay to be deleted. We will change displayed element um, content. So we will set displayed element is equal to display elements dot substring. And with substring we cut a part of the string we don't want. Okay? And we have to pass two parameters. The first one is the begin index, which in this case will be zero because we always start with zero. Okay, the begin index is zero and the end 
index will be uh, length minus one because we in programming we start counting from zero I think you should already know that so we will be length minus one okay and now we have to update the screen so we'll say calculator screen that set text will be displayed elements because remember displayed elements now is one character shorter right here so if we dry run this on our head imagine we have one character and the length is one okay because we have one and we if we subtract one from that it starts with zero and ends with zero so we have zero elements which is one main minus one is zero so that's kind of cool so now we will run uh, the app and see if this is working as we expect okay so we are we have to use the del button okay so we will press eight del and it's gone eight and nine del del okay so it's working fine now we can delete the numbers we press great right okay but we also created this other button which is doing nothing yet as you can see so we have to also do something with that button which is clear everything which is way easier I think so final button clear everything we will set it to find view by id r dot id clear everything and we will say clear everything that set on click listener so in this way I can say that we can create as many click listeners as we want or we, we have a lot of of elements that do kind of the same thing we can create one listener for every one of them as we did here okay it it is more of design and that kind of stuff okay so this is not the best design but it's easy to learn okay so new on click listener and inside the on click listener we just have to clear everything so it's way easier so to do that we will say calculator screen set text to double quotes so nothing empty and we will go and run the app and check if it works okay let's test if the clear everything button is working fine so we type the clear everything and it clears everything so pretty pretty interesting stuff we did here okay this is it for this video and in the next video we will start actually figuring out how we can actually make the calculator to calculate doing operations and all these cases that are pending right here i hope you enjoy it and i see you in the next one hello and welcome to this android development tutorial this is part three of how to make a calculator app tutorial in this tutorial we will actually start calculating with our app in the previous tutorial we set up our ui we did some functions that we now can um, print the text on the calculator screen we can delete elements and we ca can also clear everything okay in this tutorial we will learn how to actually calculate and do some basic calculations with our calculator app so right now we have the calculator app so we will go to our main activity that Java and we will uh, pay attention to these elements or actions right here which are six different ones which is dot equals addition subtraction multiplication and division so with the most basic uh, operation is addition okay so how can we calculate actually these kind of things okay 
In order for us to begin understanding step by step, the first most natural thing to do is just to print the add symbol. Okay. So we say calculator screen append and we will set the plus sign. We will run the app in order for us to understand what's going on. Okay. Let's see, I, I want to add 9 plus 9. So I press 9 plus 9. But how the calculator knows where to where a number begins and where a number ends? I mean, the calculator doesn't know what plus means. The calculator doesn't know where the number, the first operand, ends. So we have to set a flag that will tell us where the um, operation starts. In this case, here when we press plus, we want to say it everything before plus is the first number and everything after plus is the second number. Okay, so we have to find a way to do just that. So for example, we can create a boolean uh, sign, maybe, that will tell us if the operation, if an operation is pressed. So, for example, we will say boolean is up pressed, and we will set it to false as default. Okay, and when addition is pressed, we will append and also we set the flag to true is up pressed equals true. Okay, so now we know how to do this. We have an error here because it says that we need a final variable if we want to put it inside the onCreate method. Of course, we don't want final variable because we want to change this. So what we will do to fix this is we will put this flag as a global variable. So outside the onCreate method, right here. Make sure it is not final, but it can perfectly be private. Okay, so private boolean is op pressed false. So this means is an operation pressed and false. So when we do this, we can go back here and the error has disappeared. Okay. Now we know when when an operation was pressed and that kind of thing. Now, we want to know the position of the plus sign, right? That would be kind of a cool way of doing it. Not the only way, there's lots of way of lots of ways of making a great calculator. But we are learning, we're experimenting with different kind of um, options we may have. So maybe I can say, okay, now I know this is an operation, but I, I also need to know where the number, where the operation was tapped, where it was tapped, okay? Maybe not. Why not? Well, because here we can save a value, okay? So we can use a different variable right here to store the first value. I mean, what I mean with first value? I mean the value before the operation sign. We, will, we can use a double that will enable us to do floating point operations with lots of precision. So we will say private double and we will, we will call it uh, first number we will set it to zero okay first number so here we have to transform the text to the first number okay so first number will be okay will be we will say double that parse double what 
this function does is converts a string to a double. Okay? So the string in this case is calculator string dot get text dot to string. Okay? Don't forget the semicolon. And we now know the first number. Okay. Now, we press 9, we press plus, we know an operation is pressed, we know the first number is 9, and then we press again 9, and here we have to um, save the index of the second number in order for us to add it later, okay? So we will also create a int variable that will say private int second number index, so we'll set it to zero, okay? And the second number index right here, remember we start from from counted from zero. So second number index will be mm, will be the length of the screen of the string. Okay, so I think for to make this a little bit more efficient, we will say string um, screen content is calculator screen that get text that to string as you can see we have the same repetition here so to avoid that we can replace these with screen contents okay and now the we can set that the screen content right here is just before the add sign is added okay so we can set second number index to screen content that length and it means if it will be pointing to the operation actually so we don't do we want to do that maybe but maybe not okay so we will point to the next um, element that will be the second number so we put plus one okay and we also we will also um, create a, some sort of current operation thing, okay? So we'll say private char current op, okay? In order for us to know what operation should we perform, okay? So current op will be single quote and addition sign okay now when the equal button is pressed it's pretty easy to do we have to say calculator screen dot set text and here we have to do the operation okay so we have to generate the screen previously. Okay. So we check if is operation pressed and oops sorry and or maybe we will just check if operation is pressed because we need an operation to be pressed in order to calculate it, right? Yes. 
So if operation pressed, we will check if the operation is um, what we expect it to be. So if current OP equals single quote addition, this means the addition button was pressed. And if that's true, we will, for example, calculate our screen that set text, and we will perform the operation right here. And we will, for example, uh, define the second number if we want. So go double um, second number is equal to double that parse it's uppercase double okay double that parse double and we have to get a string so we're going to say calculator or maybe we will get the string here maybe string screen content calculator screen that get text that to string okay and the second number is easy to calculate really so second number is screen content that substring the index of the second number we previously saved right here if you remember so we said second number index okay and the length of the screen content so screen content dot length okay in order for us to visualize this a little bit better i will press a new line right here okay so we are parsing this double right here right which is um, screen content substring start with the screen content index and the screen content length okay so now we have the second number right there is this correct the screen content length is redundant why is this redundant okay okay let's continue here so we will set text and we will perform the operation of course we can do second number plus equal first number as simple as that we will say set text string that value of second number okay is everything fine so let's check if we don't have any errors right here so it says that we have some redundant here this says call the screen content length is redundant report variety of redundant string related operations to string or string substring so it's redundant I don't really understand this but of course when we don't understand we will try to figure out what's going on so the first thing we're doing here is getting the text the screen content the second number we parse double to a, to a substring so if we find something that is complicated for us to understand we will create a new string we will say second number string and we will set this to all of this right here okay so second number string is screen content dot substring second number index second number index and it's oh we have a, a parenthesis we we're missing a parenthesis so you know, when you simplify things, it's easier to figure out what's going on. So, screen content dot length. Now, here 
we put first double, second number string. And I think everything should be fine. Oh, I already know this redundant thing. That when you have to end on the length, okay, which in this case is not true, because we don't have to end on the length, we have to end, well, kind of on the length, but not really. So we will run this and check if this works or not. Okay, we're running it, we're waiting it to compile, and we will add again 9 plus 9 plus equal and see if it doesn't crash. Maybe it crashes, so we will think about it. Okay, Gradle build running, and we're waiting for it. Let's check if everything is okay. So something here failed. Oh, we've missed. Oh, we've missed. Some, we've missed something right here. So the extra, the, the missing parentheses was an extra one right here. So we delete that, and we run it again. And now everything should work fine. And we press pl nine plus nine equals 18.0 congratulations we did our first calculation so this was it for this video i hope you enjoy it and i see you in the next one bye hello and welcome to this android development tutorial this is part four of how to make a calculator app for android in the previous tutorials we did UI stuff, we did our first calculation, and in this tutorial, we will add the rest of the button's functionality alongside to fixing bugs if we find them. Okay, we already did addition. Now we're gonna work on subtraction in order to see how can we improve the architecture of our application. So we did this for addition, and now we will do the same for subtraction. Okay, we paste the same code that was in addition, we paste it on subtraction. And as you see, we have an error here, and the error says, variable is already defined in the scope. This means that a previous case already defined the variable, in this case, the addition case. So we will just delete the string word and we're good to go. We have to change some stuff here. For example, instead of appending an addition sign, we will append a subtraction sign. And instead of current up being addition sign, we'll set it to a subtraction sign, okay? Now, on the equals thing, we will do something different. As you can see, all of this is done only if the plus sign is pressed, but we can optimize this a little bit more. Of course, we have to type else if current op equals subtraction, okay? We will do something similar, but we don't have to repeat everything that is here. So we will, in fact, we only need the addition part and the addition and the subtraction part and the subtraction. So everything else, everything before the second number plus equal first number will be put before the first if statement, as you can see right here, okay? And everything after the second number plus equal first number will be put after the last if statement. So we're doing a lot of optimization here. And now in order for us to add a new operation is as simple as saying second number let minus equal first number. And as simple as that, we now have subtraction. Let's test it. Okay, we run the application, compile and wait it to be Send to the device, and here we will say 9 plus 9 to check if addition is still working, and it's 18. Now, 18 minus 9 equals minus 9. Oh, we have a problem. What's going on here? 
Okay, we'll go and clear everything and say, for example, 6 minus 1 equals minus 5, which is not true. What's going on here is that second number minus equal first number. Okay, so first of all, we will do a, a dry run here. We press 9. We press minus. And when we press minus, we save the, the second number index, the first number, and so on. So, 9 minus 1. Okay, we go here. And when we press equals, it gets the screen content, second number string, it gets second number, okay? And if the current operation is minus, it is second number minus equal first number, which is not that accurate because we want to go get the first number and then subtract the second number. So we will change the order of these two operands right here. To see if that's the problem okay so we will just change the order so we'll say first number or in this case second number will be equal to to first number minus second number we will run the app and we will do 9 minus 1 again to see if it works. So 9 minus 1 is 8. So that was the problem. So now we can rewrite this if we want to make it more clearly. But for now, we will continue with the next operation, which in this case is multiplication. Okay. Okay, so we'll copy the same we did on subtraction we paste that on multiplication like that but instead of appending a minus sign we will append the multiplication sign and the current op will be also the multiplication sign okay now we we'll go to equals and we will check if the current operation is multiplication okay. else if current op equals multiplication we will say second second number multiplied equal first number now we will run this and see if the multiplication works for example 2 times 3 equals 6 okay and what happens if we say 6 times 3 equals 18 times 6 equals 108 which is great okay now we will go back and continue with our operations and now we will do division okay so we will copy this again so multiplication into division and we will say, instead of appending the multiplication sign, we'll append the forward slash, which means division in computing. Okay, in current op, division. And here we will say, else if current op equals the division sign. We don't really need this because we only have four, so we can also use just else, but we're doing this kind of to make it more easy to know what we're writing. So second number equals first number divided by second number. We run this and we check if division works. 9 divided by 6 equals 1.5. 1.5 divided by 2 
equals 0 0.75, which is correct. Now, what happens if we divide something by 0, divided by 0, which is not... Mm, we will maybe see an error. It says infinity. And what happens if we say infinity divided by 0? Infinity. And infinity divided by 3. Is it still infinity? Times 6 is still infinity. Okay. We can delete maybe dy times and we have our first crash. Okay, so how can we fix this crash when we delete the infinity thing? So first of all, what can we do is when we divide by zero, we will tell the user that it's not possible to divide by zero or maybe to nothing, at least that's better. Okay. So here we will check if second number equals zero. Okay, we will just return. As simple as that. Which means do nothing and return. As simple as that. And we will check if the bug was fixed. So this calculator will have lots of bugs and we will fix a lot of them. Okay, now 9 divided by 0 equals and nothing happens because we cannot divide by 0, which for now is safe for our purposes. We can then fix that, but for now we just wanted to fix the bug and we did it. Okay, so we have four operations. Is our calculator ready then? No. It's not ready. We still can, we still can't use negative numbers, and we still cannot use dots, and we still can. Well, maybe we can use dots. So let's test if we can use dots. No, it's not working. Dot. So now we're gonna say and use the dot. Okay, but we will be fixing the bugs that arise that appear. So case r that I did that dot will say calculator screen that append and we will append of course a dot. We will run and see how it behaves. Maybe lots of unexpected behavior. But here we go. So nine dot one minus one equals eight at one. Works at least there. But now I will clear everything and we check dots. I can enter lots of dots and that's not good. And the app crashes. Okay. The app just crashes when I press equal. Okay, here we have a couple of different bugs. So let's press equal again. The app does nothing. But what happens if we do an operation like three times three? equal equal and the app crashes why is the app crashing because we are not resetting resetting the up pressed flag okay so when we do an operation we have to reset to kind of turn this false okay so we will do it at the beginning i think that's better so if is up pressed we say is up pressed false and now we will see if the bug was fixed okay so three times three equals 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 and it's not crashing which is good now that equal dot 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 minus three and crashes now the bug we have is that we are allowing to input too many dots. So we have to only allow to input one dot. For that we have to create a new flag that we that will let us know if a dot is pressed or not. So private boolean I will call it is dot pressed or maybe just is dot. 
will be false. Okay. Not really have to initialize them to false because they will be false as default. But well, that's good practice. You can even initialize this to zero if you want. But yeah, it's just good practice. Okay. Okay. So now, is dot is false? Okay. When we will display a dot right here. We have to check if the dot is not displayed already. Okay, so for that we'll say if is dot is false, we will append the dot, and of course we will set the flag to true. Now is dot is true. Okay. So this is how you kind of understand how to fix bugs and how to discover them. And now the, the application will allow us to just input one dot, okay? For example, one dot, and if we press dot, nothing else happens. One dot two minus uh, three equals minus 1.8. Now, it will say 1 dot, 1 dot, and I cannot press dot because the flag is not cleared. Okay, so when do we have to clear the flag? Well, we have to clear the flag when we clear everything, of course. And we also have to clear the ease of press flag. Okay, so and clear everything right here. We have to change a couple of flags. So, is oppressed will be set to false, of course, and is dot will be set to false again. Now, we will see if this works. Okay, so we go one dot two. Minus three. Oops, what's going on? Okay, let's do it again. Maybe if I find the new bug. So we want to find as many bugs as we can, so we can fix all of them. Okay. So we're right here. Forty minus three equals thirty-seven. Clear everything. One dot two minus 3 equals minus 1.8 minus 1.8 minus 5 equals minus 6.8 times 6 working fine so we'll clear everything and say minus oops what's going on something happened just there so we have to again fix this bug so we have lots of bugs to be fixed. We have lots of bugs to be discovered right here. Okay. 9.1 minus 0 point, and I cannot press a point. So when an op is pressed, when an operation is pressed, I have to, to set the dot to false in order to enter another dot so is dot equals false and this will be done on every operation okay okay now we will run the app again And we'll go 9.1 minus 0 0.1. Now we can press the dot, you know, so we have fixed that bug already. And it's 9. So pretty easy. And so, so from now on, we will just have to keep fixing bugs, adding new features, improve the design of our calculator app, and that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I see you in the next one. Bye.
Hello and welcome to part 5 of how to create a calculator app for Android. Okay, we will fix a box, make the app work fine, maybe improve the architecture of our app, and we will make stuff look nicer. So we will first uh, find the bugs we can, fix them, then try to improve the way we fix them, and so on. So we're going to run the application right now and see if we can find any bugs and fix them. Okay, we open the app in emulator and start. we will start pressing delete to see if we can make the app crash or to a bug, make a bug to occur. And when we press an operation like division, the app crashed. So if you can notice right here, on all the operations we have kind of the same thing. The only thing that changes is the the operation sign and the stuff we have to append. So maybe we can create a method to fix this, okay? So we will create a method that we will call operation pressed. So outside the, the onCreate method, we will type private void op pressed um, op pressed, okay? And inside this method, we have to pass the operation to know which operation was pressed. For example, we will use a char to define the operation. Operation. Okay. So instead of doing all the these large stuff right here, we just called op pressed. We will do just op pressed, and since this is addition, we will pass an addition sign for like that okay okay so we now have to do this and we will move this code to the up press method okay and see if everything works fine so here we have a couple of errors which are normal to have so first of all, calculator screen is not accessible from outside the onCreate method. For that, we will create the text view outside the onCreate method. So on the calculator screen in the initialization and definition line, we will delete final text view. And we will just leave calculator screen. And outside the onCreate method, we will type private text view calculator screen. Okay. And this way, we can now access the calculator screen text view from outside the on-grid method. Okay, pretty cool. And what else here we have? We can append this thing. So, can we convert a character to a string? Or we can do the other way around. Maybe if we can go operation to string or, or something like string value of operation maybe okay string dot value of operation okay and current op we will change this with operation so this method right here enables us to use the same method for the whole um operations okay that's cool now we will we can save lots of lines of code right here because we can delete all of these from the other operations and instead of that we will just go up pressed and the operation in single quotes so remember this is a single quote this is subtraction okay we will do the same for multiplication okay it's op pressed and multiplication this is the power of calling a method no, up pressed um, division. So single quotes and division. And you know now we have a lot less code. Most elegant looks a lot nicer. So now we will run the app to check if everything works fine. So we haven't still fixed the bug, but let's see if we still can do operations like nine times nine equals eighty one. So it, it works. Okay. So now the operation debug was when we tap um, two times 
in the an operation sign okay so here we will say we will return if the conditions are not the optimal so we're gonna say if op pressed if op if is op pressed we will return now we will run the app and check if the bug was fixed oh when we press when we press an operation we have another bug this is a new bug when we press an operation and the length of the screen content is less than one so it's empty we also um, have to return okay so we will say create an integer that would say final int um, um, screen content length okay oops it's length okay and this will be screen content dot length in order to avoid this repetition here we will in the next line we will just say screen content length okay but after this line we will say if a screen content length is zero or better even better kind of less than one or smaller than one we will also return okay so now we will run the app again and see if the bug was fixed okay so when we press the operation nothing happens and even if we press a number and two operations nothing happens so we have fixed the box we found okay so right now we're gonna try to find new box so if we press delete nothing happens clear everything if we press numbers everything is fine we press a dot a number and then we press equal minus dot two equal it still works so let's try to find another box three minus equal and we found a new box this new box occurs when we press equal and the last number and we don't have a second operand so we have to check that too okay so we go to equals and we need to to figure out if the last um, character is a number maybe okay you can we can figure out if the last character is a number we we should know if we have something apart from an operation as the last character so this basically would check if the last character is an operation okay so we will get the last character of the screen content basically okay so up press is being set to fault here which I don't think is a good idea so we will change these up press to false to the bottom of this thing so the last thing we will do is set up press to false okay so now after the screen content line we will check if the last character is not an operation for that we define a character last character we name it that way and that will be screen content char at and here we have to maybe the length of the of the of the string mm, yeah i mean if we have a string of length one then the last character will be at index zero so it will be screen content that length oops that length 
minus 1. Okay, so now we will check if last character equals addition or last character is um, subtraction or oops or last character is multiplication or oops or last character is division in any of these cases we will return now we will test and see if the bug was fixed okay so the bug was when we press 9 times equal it should crash but now it doesn't crash because we have fixed the bug okay what well, works fine divided by 9.1 and then we have a cool number double precision floating point number okay so now let's try to find more box if we can maybe we we won't be able to find every box but we will try it okay 7 divided by 9 equals divided by 1.0 equals okay times 6 works fine minus dot equals and it crashes okay so dot can only be um, pressed if the last character is not an operation so we will copy these lines we just wrote and we will paste them here in dot and of course we have to get the last character so we will copy these other two lines okay and now we will try to figure out how to do this okay if last character so basically we copy that and that should fix the bug so let's see okay so the bug occurred when we pressed like three minus dot and dot doesn't appear minus equals minus zero three okay so we now have a more stable calculator let's see if we can find new box point okay we cannot cannot um, input a dot if if the screen is empty okay because that's not okay okay now we will say and we will say final int screen content length equals screen content dot length and we will replace this screen content dot length with screen content length okay and now we will say here if screen content length is oops is less what's going on here screen content oops there's a typo here double e screen content length is less than one we will return okay so let's run the app again and see if it's working fine okay so it's compiling and hopefully oh we have a compilation okay oh we have a to type an extra e right here and that will fix it okay so now we compile it and test the application okay so now if we press a dot it won't crash the app and nothing will happen minus three 
Yeah, it works fine. It works fine. I think it works. We have fixed a lot of uh, bugs. And maybe if you can find a way to make this more elegant, you can also do it. Okay. But now, maybe we we'll want to change the layout a little bit. Okay. How do we do it? Okay, you can do lots of different stuff here, really. If you want, you can make the screen larger. If you want, you can add additional buttons, whatever the case may be. For example, I want to make the screen larger. So instead of 100 dp, I will put 150 dp. Okay, if you like that, if you like smaller, you can make it smaller. Okay, now we will see if the screen is looks larger. Okay. Okay, installing and launching, and now we have a larger screen, if you want that, okay? Maybe you don't want that, okay? Um, if you want to not show this calculator top bar, we can go and edit that on the theme, I think. So we will open up res, and we open values folder, and styles. So here in styles, we can define different items that will specify our team behavior. For example, we can, I think it is title bar. Uh, window no title, I think, would be a good guess. And we'll say true. Let's see if the title disappeared. So this calculator title, that's what, that's what I mean. Okay. And yes, it's gone. Okay. So now we have uh kind of a more clean ui if you like if you don't maybe you can still stay with the previous one and here we can also change the uh, colors of stuff we can do it here we can do it in the main layout for example if you want to do, to make the delete button to have a kind of maybe red text we'll say text color and if we specify this in red, we will be doing like FF4444, uh, four, 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 something like that. And we have delete in red. Okay, and we maybe want to clear everything to be in kind of a green or blue or whatever the case may be. So we're going to say text color, um, maybe AA, FF. AA or maybe we can I don't know it, it really depends on, on what we want maybe we can do 44 FF 44 so if you want to do it this way if you want to make uh, for example whatever the case may be you know maybe you want to make the screen a lot of a different background color so we'll go say background and we want the screen to be black for example we will set uh, six zeros but now we have to change the text color to a little bit more white to have contrast and actually be able to see what's going on so we will for example do six e's that would be cool now we will run the app and see our new aesthetic changes i'm not a kind of good designer but you can find lots of cool colors so for example eight times 8 equals 64 you can change that you can change these and now if you want to change the the a little bit more space um after this d4 we can use what's called padding i think so we're gonna say padding um 10 dp we will run and we'll say what happens so there's a lot of ui design changes that you may make so as you can see now there is a little bit of space after the last number, so that's cool. And yeah, I mean, I hope you enjoy it, and I will see you in a future tutorial. Thank you. Bye.